Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. I uh, wanted to um, continue to add to the theme of you have the power to change. Um, I want to uh, actually add some emphasis on Christians. Um, it's a need to understand that Romans 10 and 9 is asking for a confession in order for um, us to come into the kingdom. Uh, our experiences to become involved with individuals that are unequally yoked <laughs> are great because they actually can teach us something. But I think if we keep in mind that they're teaching us something such as can we overcome temptations and will that individual that is a part of our life that is not in Christ influence us to go back into um, the ways of the world and using you know, the ways of the world concerning um, our identity from the past, will we allow that influence to take us back or will we let the power of, <coughs> excuse me, Christ and its influence um, take us forward? And um, that's the question for the Christian, because I think that a lot of people get married and some may find themselves not Christians, right? One may become sold out and the other may not. Because you come does not mean that your partner is going to come, which means that there will be a conflict. Um, it's going to be a test of the wills in the mind. And sometimes the will that is broken is the relationship, right? And that's unfortunate, but when you make changes, as we've discussed, you have the power to change. There's going to be changes in your relationships because either you're going to upgrade yourself or either you're going to stay the same or you're going uh, to go backwards, right? And if you are looking at the power of change for the better, you have the power to change. It means that you're going to go higher. So that means that many people are not going to go with you. They don't even see the importance of change because even though they complain about their lives, they still love their lives. The Bible tells us that men love their sin. It's all through Genesis, you know? And this is not just men, it's women as well. So back to the point, the Bible is not going to work for, um, or I wanna say it's not gonna work for the individual that's not a Christian until the individual is ready for uh, it to work for them, meaning that they begin to work the word. And so that's something that I really wanted to express because I'm not gonna say that it's not discussed, but I felt <clears throat> a need for it to be brought up um, today because your power to use Christ is yours. Other men use other things. You know, if you're gonna overcome greed, um, in the world of Christianity, the kingdom of God, then we are going to use scriptures such as Galatians um, 5 and 19 on through the rest of it, because 19 explains what the son of perdition is in man. It is greed, it is anger, it is lack. You know, why would a person uh, be greedy? Why would they hold back anything from anyone? Love, money, why, why would they hold it back? Because they're living in a lack mentality, right? Why would they need to have um, more than one or two of something? And it's just examples, um, a woman or um, extra men because of the lack, insecurities, right? And so when you look at the fact that a matter that um, someone must accept Christ, that's when the principles of the spirit began to work for them. And it's not that they had not been um, having some interaction spiritually. Um, <clears throat> what's happening is, is that they've been having interaction, but some people are not paying attention. They're not conscious. They don't want it. These are different scenarios. They don't want to believe. Um, some people actually are like um, Dr. Strange going to see uh, my mama, and, you know, at the end of Dr. Strange. And um, he's actually standing up to um, that part of the universe telling it what 
he wants for the universe until it breaks down. So some people are fighting God because they want to do life their way. They don't care. Um, some people will begin to break down in their will when they see that there's an affliction in their life and they begin to think, well, you know, I stood up against the, the forces of, of nature or um, the power of God, the power of Christ, and then they will begin to submit. And sometimes it takes for someone to be actually broken down where they can't move and they have no other choice but to begin to pray. And that's unfortunate, but the reminder here is, is whenever you are changing, don't try and force others to do it. Be the light. And that's why there are some that come before others. And remember that greater works are in you than those that are in the world. Therefore, as you go through um, times that are hard, you go within because greater works are in you. You got to go inside to pull the treasures of Christ out. So this is where you find that you have the power to change because you're changed is within the kingdom of God, it suffers violence, but the violent take it by force. Now, how does that happen? There is secrets that have to do with the violent taken by force. It's called wisdom, all right? You have the wisdom and the power to change. As you begin to change, all of that wisdom becomes it starts to become alive, especially when you show yourself responsible for spiritual things, for the word of God, all right? So any questions, um, any thoughts, email me at ifbuilders, ifwbuilders at gmail.com. And remember your accountability to the word as a Christian. That's what makes all of the difference because you know you have a lot of people that are weak in temptation their desires carry them away but they they feel like well hey if um the pastors are doing it then why should i answer some drug dealers are out there dealing drugs because they don't see the change in the leaders but you know the light comes up in everyone therefore don't think that you're overlooked as a light shining your light is for a certain population maybe you know and that population can be the downtrodden it can be the woman or man that has been in an abusive situation misused by their husband or wife the key is to get them to the place where they understand their power in crisis to understand that they um have not been misused they allow themselves to be in a position that was not of their worthiness children of god and children of the kingdom deserve better than abuse they they have to make up their mind a lot of times people stay in abusive situations or unworthy situations because they don't know anything else so you break the power of familiarity over your life in the name of jesus this is where we exercise the power of change but understanding that again going back to the beginning the bible will not work and, and scriptures will not work for people who are not christians we can pray for them that is not a powerless thing yes but when you are looking for a person to light up that is dark and empty it's not going to happen until their time your prayers will help them yes your prayers can you know um speak to god on behalf of whatever the situation and your connection is with the person but the individual has free will. That means that their free will can fight the power of change that is mandated over their life. And the sinner's prayer is to actually indoctrinate an individual into the kingdom. The kingdom of God is, is separate from the world. Therefore, People that are about the world and the temptations and the desires, the pride and the, the greed of the world are not going to want to let go of those things because they're used to it. It's, it's what they feel happiness is. When the children of God has exercised the ability of feeling peace, 
loving themselves from within, sitting in a place of fear and fighting that fear with the power of the word that says, Satan, the Lord rebuke you because I know my rights as a kingdom dominion powered individual. You see over here, individuals that are not about the kingdom, they're about the world. We got to get that. So you pray for the people. It said, pray for your enemies. Yes. Because when they come up against you as a kingdom child or a kingdom woman and man of God, first check your own accountability to the word and make sure that you're exercising the walk. Then the next thing is when you got all of that in check, make sure that you allow them to see the light, no matter if they cuss you out, no matter if they um, say negative things or they've slandered and lied on you. Stay in the posture of Christ because he did it. We're following an example that went to the cross. The cross changed Christ, by the way. No one really talks about that. The change was in the ascension, but he went down first. So we, we're always walking in the same, the same dynamics. We're going through the same thing. You know, pray for your eyes to be enlightened and your heart to see the path that God is taking you on. The next thing is allow yourself to be free from a life that is unworthy and accept worthiness because you were, you, you made a decision because you wanted some things other than what you had. Make a decision and begin to tell yourself the truth. You are worthy, especially if you are a kingdom believer. Kingdom believers don't just believe, they act. Now you guys have a blessed day. I love you in the Lord. And remember that you have the power to change your life. You and God. Christ in you. This is the power of truth. Amen. Have a blessed day.